Over the last four years, I've seen about three, maybe four moose wandering around up here. We know they're around, but it's not too often that you see a cow and a calf in the same day. I definitely don't want a woodpecker tearing up my house, but that being said, he's been here just a little bit longer than I have. As I've been dealing with him over the last week or two, I've been trying to decide the best way to take care of him. This is the spot right here where he likes to hang out. I don't even see any real damage he's done. I don't see anything wrong with him. Beautiful feathers. He was acting kind of crazy yesterday. You don't like him? I had the thought that I would go down and pick up one of the fake owls to perch somewhere around here and hopefully scare him off. But he really hasn't been doing much damage. To me, it looks like he might be picking the sap off the dug fur. It's also possible that as he's working his way around the place that maybe the stain on the siding did him in. Either way, he's beautiful. So I thought I would attach him to a branch and let him dry out and maybe keep him out in the shop or something. Yesterday, as I was leaving, I noticed he was sitting on the ground and he was not quick to fly I tried to walk up close to him, but he eventually found his wings and took off, so I assumed he was fine. My main focus for this week is to get all of the plumbing finished. Most of the water lines have been ran. I just have to tie a few things back together. In a best case scenario, I wouldn't have any water lines in an exterior wall or even in the roof rafters. Because of how I plumbed the house, this is just what I've got to deal with. What I will likely do before I insulate is wrap all of the water lines that are in the exterior walls with what's called a Thermoflex insulation. I will then put the Roxel insulation around it on top of that. I'm hoping this should be good enough to resolve our issues. We only had a couple of days this year where it got down below zero. Since we've lived here, it's been as cold as 25 below zero. That doesn't happen too often, thank goodness. Because I have water lines in exterior walls, I'll have to be aware of this and take considerations if it happens to be that cold. They make PEX water lines in blue, red, and white. I 
years ago I stopped using the color coded water lines because if I happened to run out of one collar and needed just a little bit more pipe, I couldn't use the other collar to finish off the job. I picked up enough water line to do our house all in the same color. The PEX water line also comes in rolls and 20 foot lengths. The truth is 20 foot lengths are much easier to work with than the rolls. But you're naturally prone to having more couplings with the 20 foot length. After cutting out and removing all the pecs that was under the stairs, I simply have to run the softener loop and reconnect into the existing water lines that I did last year. The main water line coming in has been changed to a one inch line, but everything else is basically the same. In the utility room, I'm trying to leave the adequate room to have water filters and water softener. The exterior hose bibs on each end of the house, I plumbed in hard water. On the north end of the house, I did plumb one bib with soft water. It's always nice to be able to wash your car with soft water and not be as concerned about water spots. I will not allow the water softener to drain into the septic system. We will use potassium instead of sodium, and technically potassium isn't going to hurt a septic system, but I will likely dig a dry well and allow the softener to drain into that. Most water softeners cycle about once a month. The system that I will put in the house here will only cycle as it needs to. It's quite an efficient water softener. When I had my plumbing company, I had a very specific water softener built, and I will do the same thing for our house. The water is not horribly hard, but it's hard enough.
Because we're using tankless water heaters, a water softener has to be used. One of the fastest ways to wear out a tankless water heater is to run hard water through it. Toilets, dishwasher, washing machine, clothes, your skin, all of these things benefit from soft water. Some people don't like that slippery feeling, but once you get used to it and once you recognize the good that it's doing, it's hard to live without. This time of year, most people's skin gets pretty dry. Once we have a water softener, that will help with this problem. Okay, all the water lines are completely finished. It's the end of the day. It's been quite warm all day long. I haven't worn my coat all day. Uh, it's getting very warm very fast. Um, a very interesting day overall. Uh, showed up to find that dead uh, uh, woodpecker. Looked off to my left and I found a cow and calf moose, which was really cool. Um, there's probably four or five moose that wander up and down this valley, uh, but they're not, you know, they're, they're somewhat rare. We don't, we don't see them too often around here. So when I followed the tracks and saw that it came right through the, the, the property, if I'd been paying attention, I could have looked out the window and, and seen it. Um, just really cool. Reminds me that I'm living up here in the woods. Water lines are all done. Tomorrow I'm going to start the process of putting everything under pressure, make some repairs to the sewer line. I feel confident that by Friday I'll be completely finished. Things are, are going quite well. It's getting very, very warm, very fast. 53 degrees uh, in town, 48, 49 degrees up here. The snow is going away exceptionally fast. The creek should be rip-roaring here real quick, which makes us a little bit nervous. Um, we're gonna get to see what happens. But uh, anyway, it's been a, a great couple of days. I'm getting a lot of stuff done. Um, I can't look, I can't wait to get the uh, plumbing inspection done, so.